A Spoint City is a new urban construction model for flood management, strengthening ecological infrastructure and drainage systems proposed by Chinese researchers in early 2000 and accepted by the Chinese Communist Party and the State Council is urbanism policy in 2014. Engineering solutions are popular interventions, but cities can't simply wipe away flood risk. To address this issue, China's Spoint City initiative has a ambitious goal. By 2020, 80% of urban areas should absorb and reuse at least 70% of rainwater. In 2015, China launched a national initiative to build 16 pilot spawn cities. These cities were chosen based on their vulnerability to flooding, population density, and economic development potential. The goal of the initiative was to build cities that should absorb and use 70% of rainwater, reduce urban flooding, and improve water quality. The case of Lingyang, a planned city in Shanghai's Wudong district, illustrates typical spoint city measures. These include rooftop covered by plants, scenic wetlands of rainwater storage, and permeable pavements that store excess runoff water and allow evaporation for temperature moderation. With ambitions to be China's largest spoint city project, the Lingyang city government has invested 119 million USD in retrofits and innovations that could be modeled for the majority of Chinese cities lacking modern water infrastructure. Chinese cities are making noteworthy efforts. In the pledge to expand coverage of urban greenery, Shanghai announced the construction of 400,000 square meters of rooftop gardens in early 2016. The project is a collaborative effort between city regulators, property owners, and engineers. Spawn City Project in Sherman and Wuhan have performed effectively during heavy rainfalls. One of the most well-known spawn cities in China is Wuhan, the capital city of Hubei province. Wuhan has implemented a number of spawn city projects including permeable pavements, rain gardens, and green roofs. These projects have developed to reduce flooding and improve water quality in the city. Other spawn cities in China include Shanghai, Xiamen, and Shenzhen. These cities have also implemented a range of spawn city projects such as green roofs, wetlands, and permeable pavements. The Spawn City initiatives has been seen as a model for other countries looking to mitigate flooding and improve water management in urban areas. The People's Republic of China adopted the Spawn City initiative largely motivated by the failure of conventional grey infrastructures for flood control and stormwater management systems due to the persistent efforts by Chinese ecological urbanists through letters and proposals sent to the high-level Chinese authorities since early 2000. Though the concept had been published and practiced since early 2000. It was the Beijing flood on July 21, 2012, which caused 79 deaths that prompted the Chinese authorities to accept the Spawn City concept and make it a nationwide policy. In 2015, China was reported to have initiated a pilot initiative in 16 districts. The term Spawn City was first used in China in 2013 by the State Council, which is the chief administrative authority of the People's Republic of China. In 2015, China launched a nationwide initiative to build 16 pilot spawn cities, which were selected based on their vulnerability to flooding, population density, and economic development potential. The goal of this initiative was to build cities that could absorb and use 70% of rainwater, reduce urban flooding, and improve water quality. The spawn city initiatives was seen as an innovative approach to urban water management and has since been adopted by other countries around the world. Since then, China has continued to expand the Spoint City initiative and by 2019, more than 30 cities in China had implemented Spoint City projects. These projects have included green roofs, rain gardens, permeable pavements, and wetland, among other measures. The Spoint City concept is now widely recognized as a key strategy for urban resilience and sustainable development. The Spoint City initiative is a problem-solving approach to address the challenges of urban flooding and water management in cities. The initiative recognizes that traditional approaches to urban water management such as building more drainage systems and pumping stations are not sufficient to address the increasing frequency and severity of flooding even in urban areas. Instead, spawn cities focus on using natural systems and infrastructures to absorb and retain rainwater runoff, reducing the burden on traditional drainage system and improve water quality. By implementing
implementing a range of small city projects such as green roofs, permeable pavements and wetlands, cities can increase their capacity to absorb and use rainwater, reducing the risk of flooding and improving water quality. Spawn cities also promote the use of green spaces and vegetation which can improve air quality, reduce urban heat, island effects and enhance the overall quality of life for residents. In this way, the Spawn City Initiative is a problem-solving approach that seeks to address the complex challenges of urban water management in a holistic and sustainable way. It recognizes the importance of working with natural systems and infrastructure to build resilient and livable cities for the future. Spawn cities are urban areas that have implemented a range of measures to manage and reuse rainwater. Some benefits of spawn cities in China include the flood prevention, water conservation, improved water quality, enhanced urban greenery, economic benefits. So now we will discuss these one by one. So how it helps for the flood prevention. So sponge cities are designed to absorb and store rainwater, reducing the risk of flooding during heavy rainfall events. The second benefit is its water conservation. By capturing and storing rainwater, sponge cities can reduce the demand for freshwater resources, which are becoming increasingly scarce in many parts of China. The third benefit is its improved water quality. By filtering rainwater through natural systems like wetlands and green roofs, spawn cities can help to improve the quality of water in rivers and other bodies of water. The fourth benefit is its enhanced urban greenery. So many spawn city measures involve the use of green infrastructure like the parks, green roofs and rain gardens which can enhance urban greenery and provide additional benefits like improved quality of air and reduced urban heat island effects. The last benefit is its economic advantage. Spawn city projects can create jobs in areas like construction, landscaping and maintenance. So it can generate revenue from activities like ecotourism. So overall spawn cities in China offer a range of benefits including improved flood resilience, water conservation and environmental quality as well as economic opportunities for local communities. The key elements or the components of spawn city projects include the permeable surfaces, natural water retention systems, water reuse systems, green infrastructure, community engagement. Now we will discuss these one by one. Number one, natural water retention systems. Spawn cities often incorporate natural water retention systems like wetlands, ponds and lakes. These systems help to absorb and store rainwater, reducing the risk of flooding during heavy rainfall events. Second one is water reuse systems. Spawn cities often incorporate systems for reusing rainwater. This can include systems for collecting and storing rainwater for irrigation, toilet flushing and other non-portable uses. The third component is green infrastructure. Spawn cities often incorporate green infrastructure like parks, green roofs and urban forests. Green infrastructure helps to absorb and store rainwater while also providing additional benefits like improved air quality and reduced urban heat island effects. The fourth key component is community engagement. Spoin cities often involve community engagement and education programs to raise awareness about the importance of sustainable water management and to encourage community participation in water management activities. Overall, the key components of a spoin city are designed to work together to create a sustainable, resilient urban environment that can absorb and reuse rain water to reduce flooding, improve water quality and enhance the overall quality of life for the residents. The duration of making a spawn city depends on various factors such as the size of the city, the scope of the project, the level of complexity involved, the availability of resources and the level of community engagement. In China, where the concept of spawn cities originated, the government launched a national program in 2015 to transform 30% of country's urban areas into spawn cities by 2020. The program aimed to complete 16 pilot projects by 2020 and achieve full-scale implementation in 2021. However, it's important to note that the process of transforming a city into a spawn city is ongoing and involves continuous improvements and adaptations based on monitoring and evaluation of project outcomes. Therefore, the duration of making a spawn city can vary depending on specific circumstances and the desired outcomes of the project. The cost of 
surface point city project can vary widely depending on factors such as the size of the city, the specific goals and the objectives of the project, the technologies and techniques used, and the local labor and the material cost. In general, point city projects aim to improve the ability of cities to manage and utilize water resources such as by increasing permeable surfaces, constructing green infrastructure like rain gardens, and implementing water reuse and recycling systems. Estimates suggest that the cost of a point city project can range from a few million dollars to several billion dollars. For example, China's Point City Initiative, which aims to transform 30% of the country's urban areas into point cities by 2020, it is estimated to cost over 200 billion USD. It's worth noting that the benefits of Spoin City project can also be significant, including improved water quality, increased resilience to floods, and enhanced ecological and recreational values. These benefits can help offset the cost of the project over time.